Hey guys, Big Daddy Nines coming to you again here uh, for a little Let's Tech uh, troubleshooting session. Um, oh, also known as Chris's Microsoft, sorry. Um, apologize for no videos in a long time. I uh, did kind of finish up the, uh, the series that I was working on and uh, had some other stuff pop up at work. So haven't haven't been able to really dedicate the time to this channel that I'd like, partially because of things at work, partially because of some of the stuff in my training plan, partially because of another channel that my family and I started and we've been doing some uh, gaming stuff. So it's a lot of fun. It's Team Nines, uh, just uh, YouTube dot com forward slash team 9z and uh, you can see some of the stuff if your kids like minecraft or if you actually like watching uh, minecraft on youtube you might you might check that out uh... what we're going to be looking at today is going to be a uh... a little quick troubleshooting session based off of um, when when you're running into a situation where you uh... you need to know what's going on with a file uh, a uh, real world example from not too too long ago at a situation where I had some uh, some activity that was happening inside of Sysvault. It was causing all the domain controllers to replicate Sysvault over and over again. And um, in this particular environment, you had to kind of prove that there was a problem with another team. So if I go to the virus scanning people and say, hey, I know it's your stuff that's causing this, they're going to say, well, you prove it to me and maybe it's our stuff. But... Uh, you know that's not uncommon in IT, right? So, not uh, not too surprising there. But what you need to be able to do in that case, uh, is specifically in this case, obviously DFSR or FRS, that's what tr replicates your Sysvault and NetLogon log folders. Um, you need to be able to figure out. Uh, what's happening. In this case, we also were seeing on a lot of the domain controllers, there's a whole bunch of these um, conflict and file resolution uh, errors that were going on. And so um, because of that, you would have actually multiple servers changing the same files at about the same time, which of course causes everybody to replicate the, the stuff. And in, in, in this case, 800 files in Sysvol. If you looked at any given domain controller in, in any given day in a 24-hour period, it was like a couple hundred thousand files replicating. Out of those 800 files, they replicated 100,000 of them or a couple, a couple hundred thousand of them. So obviously something going wrong there. We don't want that. That's a lot of replication traffic, plus they're always having to uh, do conflict and delete. So how do, how do we do that? How do we go about um, to determining what's happening on a file, right? So um, first off, we go to live.sysinternals.com, and we're going to pull down not FileMon because it doesn't exist anymore. They've moved all of that into ProcMon. So we're going to go ahead and pull ProcMon down. And uh, that's going to be the primary tool we're going to be using for this. And so we'll go ahead and pull this down. And I have no idea where I just put that. I think I might have put it in my other user folder. I think I logged on as administrator there. And no, where in the heck did I put that sucker? Let's do it again. Figure out where in the heck I saved it. Uh, it says it's there. Am I just missing it? Oh, it's on the E drive. That's bizarre. Put it on the desktop. Then we can get it a little easier. There we go. Okay, so process monitor. Now, when you kick this off, it's monitoring everything that happens anywhere, period, on the operating system. You can see it very, very quickly starts to dominate the, the server you're on. Um, and you can see we've already captured over 100,000 events, right? And even though some of it's being filtered, you know, that, that's not good. So first thing you want to do is go ahead and stop capturing the events. And then uh, we'll go ahead and clear that display just to get this stuff out of here. You can see it's being backed by virtual memory. You can log this to a file. Um, and if you want to script this tool, which I'll show you here in a little bit, uh, you could create like a list of servers and shoot this off and have this, this uh, happen. But the first thing you want to do is you want to get your, your capture filter right. So let's, uh, let's say that we have a shared folder um, on this server that's being used, and we'll call it Sysvol, just not because this is the Sysvol folder, just because, hey, we're going we're gonna to be doing things with this. And so um, let's go ahead and share it out. Let's do what we should always do, of course, immediately everyone full control for everything, right, because I actually have to do that because this is not on the same domain as... Um, Uh, the machine we're going to test it from. So, okay, so we've got this this sysvol folder here, and we're just pretending it's sysvol, and we'll throw like a text off, give my name a GPO XML, and pretend like that's something important as well, right? Okay, so we've got this path, right? You see users, administrator, desktop, sysvol. So we're going to want to put that as our, our filter. 
So um, you would think that with the little bullseye thing, you might be able to kind of do that, but it doesn't actually work. Um, so instead, you see that it put PID 15 or 1252, which if I were to look that up, that's probably explorer.exe because this is actually Windows Explorer. So we're going to go ahead and pull that, pull that out. Go ahead and leave all the default filters in whenever you do something like that, like this, because it's going to exclude stuff that you're probably not looking for anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a new one, and we're just going to say that the path is going to contain that. And type this in, because weird things happen when you don't type this in. When you try to copy and paste this in, it's really bizarre, but I mean, I'm, I'm telling you right now, it just doesn't work sometimes. So um, this is this is what we're going to put in there. C users administrator desktop sysvol. So C users administrator sysvol, and then we'll go ahead and add that in. So now we're only going to capture on events for this. All right. So we're going to go ahead and start capturing. You can see um, that at this point in time we've, we've got a capture filter running and you can see it's not not actually picking up but you can see that it's still doing a whole lot of uh, events here uh, it you know but it's only showing the the stuff that that we want to see right so okay so um, if I open this up you can see nothing has happened here I've clearly done something wrong what did I done do wrong here in my filter Let's go ahead and take a look at that. C users administrator desktop sysvol. Silly me. All right, so desktop and then sysvol. And then we'll add that back in. All right, so now you can see that actually things are happening. In fact, if I were to open that file in Notepad, go ahead and turn on the um, auto scroll and hit the end here, you can see that now we've seen that just by opening Notepad, I've done a number of things here. Whoa. Done a number of things where Notepad's actually kind of doing its its stuff, right? So now I, you know, can go ahead and save that, and you'll see that Notepad has done even more things. And there you go. So now we're only filtering by uh, that that Notepad, and uh, so nothing that's coming up in the display here is uh, really terribly uh, uh, too too hard to get into, right? Okay, so the next piece of this is going to be we want that um, you know to to catch something that, that's happening. So let's let's pretend like uh, let me go ahead and eight, go out here, and I need to authenticate to it. Just didn't come up on the right monitor. Apologize for that. Okay, I got. Username and password in there. Okay, so uh, now we're we're hitting this across the network. So I'm going to go ahead and open up that that text file here, and we can see that my auto scroll isn't actually working right at the moment. All right, so we'll add some stuff to this and go ahead and save it. So you can see that we're catching, we're catching. Oh, why the auto scroll isn't working on this thing? But you know, we're catching um, operations that are happening. It's, it's all coming in through Explorer.exe. But you know, if we had an, another system that was touching us, so let's say that we had like a uh, um, virus scanning program going on. Obviously, we're going to see some of that. So let me users and then oops and then share. This well. There. So now we should see like another program. You see the command prompt has now started to show up in here. So pretending that that maybe is your virus scanning program. Now what you've got is some uh, you you've got some evidence, right? Now at this point it's you know it's showing up and it's saying hey you know something touched this file. Okay, so the next part of this is the configuration that we've got. We've got our filter. Maybe we have multiple filters. Maybe we have a few things in here. Like um, we didn't really want to see this explorer.exe thing right there. So I can actually say exclude explorer.exe. I did not mean to do that. Let me go fix that. Let's get that out. And instead, we want to uh, exclude this time 
explorer.exe. So now what we're seeing is like the notepad and the command prompt. So um, if you if you already know in some like single testing on one server that you're playing around with this on uh, that this is coming up a lot. In this case, for me, DFSR was hitting a lot. Now, obviously, DFSR was hitting it a lot because, well, DFS is what DFS is, and it's part of the, the thing. I needed to see other stuff in there. I didn't want my filter window just full of thousands of these things, right? So I've got it kind of tweaked and, and tuned the way I want, so I can export this configuration, and let's just throw it out here um, and say uh, sysfall capture. And now what I can do is I can come back in. I'm going to go ahead and pull him back to the uh, root so he's not in there. Let's open that and close that and get these things. There's nothing on it. So we launch product one again. And what you can do is you can come in and import the configuration. We'll just bring in the one that we just uh, uh, pulled on. And for whatever reason, that didn't get named with an extension. That's a bug in sys uh, in um, process monitor, by the way, that I forgot. Uh, so we need to actually rename that. So let's go do that real quick. So if you change the name, you have to give the extension in there, which is kind of silly, I know. But sysfall capture to sysfall capture dot pmc. .pmc, okay, it's there, and now I can pick it. All right, so now you'll see that it has pulled back in my uh, uh, my capture window here. So why is that important? That is important because sometimes you need to do this on like a whole bunch of servers, right? So let's say that we want to do this on uh, some remote systems. The way we could go about doing that, there's actually a couple of ways that you can do this, but um, we'll use another sysinternals tool, and we'll go ahead and pull down my favorite uh, uh, PSExec, and we'll go ahead and save that to the desktop. Alrighty, and so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and say PSExec, and then we're going to um, do 10.0.0.8 or whatever your computer happen, uh, happens to be that you're going to be doing this on. And you can use the name, obviously, too. And then we're going to do Procmon. And there's some switches that we can use with Procmon that will uh, help us to um, pull in that configuration and start it with, uh, you know, with, with, uh, with those switches so that it will... Uh, you know, it pull our configuration in and do the log file out someplace. So uh, we're going to use this command right here, and we'll uh, we'll go ahead and pull in the uh, the help file real quick, so we can look at all the different uh, switches that we can do here. So, oops. So, and we'll go ahead and pull that up now. So as you can see, we've got the backing log file, and we've got the uh, that's the important one. And then the other one is going to be the uh, load config. And we also have a quiet switch. And uh, most of the rest of this is not important. Like running in 32-bit on a 64-bit system will launch it, but won't capture anything. So it's completely useless to you. So again, we're going to do PS exec. And the reason we're going to do PS exec is because if you want to launch this on a whole bunch of computers, you can. OK, so PS exec, and then we're going to do um, you could do this as system account. So if, if you are wanting to launch this on a whole bunch of systems and actually make sure that it's the local system account that kicks this off in case you're um, needing to catch or possibly some things that aren't showing up, uh, not too often that you might actually have to do that. But in a lot of cases, uh, PSExec with a dash S can help you like do things that you can't with your own account. Like if you need to rename the file, it just won't get renamed. Uh, on a bunch of systems. Just know that you are running it as the computer account, so it does give you even more privileges than you would have as an administrator on the box, so be careful about that. So we'll, we'll go ahead and leave it in there. It doesn't hurt anything. So we're going to uh, do that dash s, and we're going to go ahead and kick off the procmon, and we're going to go ahead and do the uh, backings file, b-a-c-k-i-n-g B -A -C -K -I -N -G file, and we're going to go ahead and put that c colon backslash users, and then administrator, and then desktop, 
and then we're going to call it uh, capture1.pml, PML is proc, proc mon load. Um, and then we're also going to need to have the configuration file too, so we're going to uh, we're going to do the forward slash uh, load config, and then we're going to do c colon blank slash users administrator desktop, and then sysvol capture dot pmc, and we'll go ahead and do the uh, quiet because you're going to do it on a remote system. You'll want to kick it off that way. I forgot to do that. Let's do this again. Uh, with one very important thing, if you've never run Process Monitor on a remote system and you're going to go kick this off on 20, 100 servers or something like that and get these uh, logging, they likely have not accepted the EULA, uh, especially if you use the system account because you will have to accept it for every user on the box. So just go ahead and accept EULA, EULA, end user license agreement, and there we go. So now, oh, uh, system cannot find the path specified. What did I do wrong? These here. Let's go look her over. Now, if you're for, if you're not familiar with my Let's uh, Tech type episodes, we intentionally uh, will have problems in this, and that's just it's not that I throw in problems just to bore you guys. I actually I don't edit out little issues that I have. Users, oh, I hate that it does that. So, accustomed to PowerShell, where I can tab to complete in the middle of things, and it doesn't. Okay, administrator, desktop, uh, the backing file is, uh, we're just going to call it capture one dot progmon log, and then we had the um, load config. I'm still trying to tab to complete. C colon backslash users, administrator, desktop, and then, oh, go away, Outlook crashes. I'm beta testing a new version of Outlook. I still think I am on this one. Apologize for the slight interruption there. Okay, desktop, and then where this is the load config, so sysvol capture.pmc, except the EULA, and quiet. Still can't find it. Cannot f start Procmon. So let's try it without the system account. I don't think that's what's causing this problem, but I'm doing something weird here. There we go. Okay, so I was trying to run it as a system account. For some reason, it couldn't find the thing. Okay, so now it's logging. Now, you can do this without the dash i in the, uh, in the uh, psexec command. It means non-interactive, which means it'll actually launch in session zero. And it'll, it'll be running even though you're not actually physically logged onto the box. So then, you know, we'll want to go ahead and grab some things. So it'll show up and do stuff and things. So there it should have probably logged some stuff. And there we go. So we've got some things. Now, it didn't matter that I had Explorer, remember, because I cut that out. All right, so, and then you're going to want to come back through, and um, you're going to want to send off another command to all of these remote systems that you're going to kick off, and that one's going to be uh, the same syntax, but in the, we're going to bother with uh, PS exec. You're going to do uh, users, and, uh, well, actually, probably the administrator desktop. And then we're going to do PS exec uh, as the system account and procmon and then terminate. And it should, oh, because, hmm, now let's try it without the system account there because it was me. All right, yeah, that's right. Cause it, oh, I was already running as the administrator. That's why that didn't work, by the way, because I was trying to, oh, now I was running as administrator. I don't know why that didn't work. Scratch that, reverse it. Um, okay, so now it's shut down. You want to uh, you want to do the procmon terminate and not try to do like task kill or something like that because it won't write to the file and then you get corruption in your log. Then you can come back and open your procmon log, um, capture one right here in this case, and there you go. Your your stuff is where you can go see what's touching that file. Now, if this, in my case, you needed to do this on a lot of different servers, you could you could actually set this up. Um, I'll show you a neat little trick here, and I think I've covered this before, but notepad, 
um, we'll call this servers dot txt. I've only got one server here, but you'll get the point. So we we'll call it 10.0.0.8, .8, not zero. Um, and then what you could do is a simple little script like um, probably the quickest thing since we, so we've got a file, right? So what you got to do here is like for forward slash uh, f to tell it you've got the file and then tell it um, percent %c in, let's just point at that file name obviously users, administrator, desktop, servers dot txt uh, and then do and then just cheat here a little bit and get the command that we already ran that uh, worked properly so I'll go ahead and mark this and we'll do my cheat skis and get rid of that and we'll just use the exact same command we had. Now obviously if you're doing this on multiple systems you would populate that uh, with just a hair more uh, servers than one, but I won't get the one right now uh, powered on. So uh, we're going to do that except we're going to change the uh, PS exec quack quack and then percent C. Oops. So it'll carry the variable forward for every one of the every one of the entries that it found in that file. See if this works or not. So oops. So what did I do wrong here? Could not find the spot file specified. Is this the same issue that we had before? Um, and we can see what it did. So it did try to PS exact to 10.0.0.8 and then oh procmon. I didn't give it a path because I'm silly. Um, so obviously we need to tell it. That's probably the problem we've had this whole time. I'm just saying, hey, go randomly pick a procmon thing. And it did work that one time because we were sitting in the directory where it was, right? Users, um, administrator. You have to tell it where you're going to uh, need a desktop. You need to tell it where to find the file. Obviously it can't just read your mind. Alright, error code during the snapshot. Okay, so the problem we've got here is um, I'm trying to overwrite an existing file and it can't answer the question what to do with that, I think. So, wait, was that actually the error that said? Did I close that out? Daggum me for Mr. Closer here. Uh, let's close that. And so, is it actually running still? Ah, quit that. I don't see another instance running. Why is PSExec still trying to do things? Details. Uh, yeah, it is. It's running. It's just not running in interactive session. Okay, so that one, that one finished. So we need to get rid of the capture one, and we need to get rid of. I guess that's it. I think everything else should work just fine. Maybe. There we go. So it's kicked it off. It's actually logging. You can see that we've got a new capture one file that's actually running right now, and um, as I mentioned before, it's um, you know it's best to shut that that down gracefully, right? Uh, but before we do that, let's you know once again make sure it actually picks up something to put in the log file. Okay, so it should have something in the log file. So now we'll go ahead and let's see. Do we got one in the terminate procmon terminate? Let's, let's try it like this. Progmon terminate. May not work. May work. Did it drop it? Yep. So you can see Progmon, uh, the, it exited right here. So we should be able to open the capture gracefully. And there they are. There was us opening up the notepad and doing things. So now what you could do with this is kick off just 
you know, instantaneously a capture on a whole bunch of systems and have them start logging for, um, you know, what is changing this file. You could also point this at a registry entry. And as a matter of fact, you could even have this just monitor one PID. Whatever your filter is, and you can see that there's all sorts of things that you can uh, that you can filter for Procmon to go and do. And if you do the filter right, it's not going to sit there and capture a billion events a, a minute. You know, you, you're you're going to be able to kind of uh, you know tie uh, tie that down to something a little bit more usable. Anyway, um, that would get you kicked off on a whole bunch of systems, so you can then go gather the logs and go once again trudge through them. You're still going to have to do that. There's not a log parser for Pro, uh, Procmon that I that I'm aware of, but hopefully that helps you out. Um, and guys. As always, uh, if you did find this useful, interesting, or helpful in any way, if you could quick give me a, a little thumbs up in the description down here below. And uh, if you do want to get notified when I put up new videos, and uh, just hit that subscribe button, and you'll get a little pop-up. I promise I'll try to do some more videos in a little bit better cadence. I won't go so many months without uh, actually doing anything. It's just been really crazy at work lately, and I had a little bit of extra time today, so thought I'd throw this out there. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next episode.